Hello, welcome back. This is the first in a series of videos about the various systems of our electric sailboat. For this video, we'll be talking about the general electric system of the boat and how it works. Everything from the battery to the electric bus to the equipment. What does it mean to be an electric sailboat? Most people think it's mainly about electric propulsion, but for us, it's trying to have one energy source for everything on the boat, including things like cooking and heating. So for us, the energy source is electricity. First, we'll use kilowatt hours or kilowatts uh, versus amp hours to talk about power. It's the most simple way to understand the power needs of the boat when you have multiple voltage systems on the boat. When we started the design of the boat, we needed to estimate how much energy use we were going to have. I came up with several models for when we're at anchor to when we're doing long passages at sea with a full boat. We had a range of something like 2.7 kilowatts to 25 kilowatts per day. However, most of the time it's just Isabella and I, so we targeted a model closest to that with some flexibility to go over when needed. We generally can live off of something like 4 to 7 kilowatts per day, except for maybe in winter time when we have the heater on. So once you figured out your desired usage with different equipment, you need to decide on the power delivery network for your boat. For our boat, we have a 24 volt DC house system and a 224 AC system. For our propulsion, we have a 40 volt, uh, 48 volt DC system. We chose 24 volt for the house system to keep their weight down by using smaller wires. Really, there isn't much a drawback other than that maybe sometimes it's hard to find 24 volt components in remote places. But we have many spare parts for all the major systems. So let's take a look at the system. Although we have essentially three major power networks, the 48 volt system essentially drives everything else. This is also where the main power bank is located. So let's start there. We have 10 24 volt, 1.8 kilowatt lithium batteries. So we have a modest 18 kilowatt main battery bank. This battery drives propulsion, but it also sources the power for the AC system and the 24 volt system. For the AC system, we have a five kilowatt inverter that operates most of our house electric needs such as cooking, laptops, blenders, vacuums, etc. Although we do uh, have to be thoughtful about what we have on at any time, uh, we've never had any problems with the 5 kilowatt capacity on our boat. What about the 24 volt system? For the 24 volt system, we use a PowerPlex smart bus system that reduces electric runs throughout the entire boat, again to keep the weight down. The system has many safety features built in and can be monitored and programmed to efficiently run the whole house. Uh, the way the 24 volt system is charged is through the 48 volt system, but we also have two uh, lithium batteries with a total of 3.8 kilowatt of power for use for DC uh, power of the house. This allows for high current draws for things like the windlets or electric winches. We can use the 24 volt system for also for the fridge, freezers and navigation electronics, sensors, electric winches, windlets, etc. There are, these are the most efficient electronics and we can often run them continuously for days. So how is our main battery bank charged? We have two sources that are really great, and one at least is fairly efficient. Like we mentioned in the previous video, we have more than 1.2 kilowatts of solar in our boat. Generally, the rule of thumb is you can generate about one third of that due to various shadows while sailing or at anchor. With that said, on an optimal day, and in an optimal situation, we can generate more than one kilowatt per hour. So that's pretty nice. So in the summertime, we generate between three to six kilowatts of power which as you might note, covers some or all our house power needs. So the second way we charge the main battery banks is to generate power while under sail through the ocean volt sail drive. This scrubs a little bit of boat speed, usually about half a knot for the power generation. Overall, it's a nice solution but the power generation is quite modest at six knots, which is the common boat speed, which is 100 watts per motor. But of course, if you get above 10 knots of boat speed, the generation is nearly one kilowatt per motor, which is quite nice. So on a long passage under sail, you can hugely, it can be hugely beneficial. Sailing in the mid and summertime where there's pretty much light winds, where you barely move, it hasn't been so useful for us so far. The last option to charge in the main battery banks is to use the DC diesel generator. We prefer not to have to run the generator at all, and our goal in the future is to configure to have a configuration that completely removes it. 
But unfortunately, currently we have to, if you want to travel in the med in the summer where there's very little wind, you have to run the motor with the genset running. The genset is a Fisher Panda 15 kilowatt DC generator. Like many of the commercial boats that use hybrid systems, the DC generator is operated at a very optimal speed to generate the, the rated power. In our case, it's 15 kilowatts, so it's a fairly efficient solution. So hopefully that gives you a quick summary of our system. Uh, to summarize, it's a 48 volt system that drives both a 220 AC and a 24 volt house power. Uh, the battery bank is charged by solar, hydro regeneration, uh, or generator, and or shore power. The system is a bit more complicated than that, uh, but hopefully that gives you a glimpse to how our system works. So that concludes our video for today. I'm sure you have a bunch of questions, especially around the operation of maybe the ocean volt cell drives, the power usage, uh, where it's most effective, or you may have uh, more questions about the smart bus system that we mentioned in this video as well. I'll try to cover them in the next few videos, uh, continuing this series, so stay tuned.